Okay, today we're going to be taking a look at this uh, 1.5 TCTL coil. So I'm going to start by taking off the bottom screws. There's actually, most of them are actually missing when we got this. So yeah, most of these are all missing. Except for two. And this should release the back cover here. Yeah, there's only two screws on the... Um, back of this Let's see here we go that's the bottom case there's another antenna right here but you can't see it but there's another antenna element up here so let's set this down in a safe place put this right over here all right let's grab our meter and start checking stuff out so this one's a little bit different from the others Let's have a look. And first, let's see if we can see any physical damage. That's the first step on this. This is obviously too big to fit under my microscope. So I'm going to start by just inspecting it and see if I see anything that looks off or broken. So a lot of times you'll get broken traces and connections. So far, I don't see anything obvious. Coax connections are good. Okay, so what I want to check, so here's our meter. Um, let me make sure this is in frame. Okay, we should be good to go. So I'm going to inspect a little bit closer and start checking some diodes. Let's see. I have to lean over to see. Let me put this somewhere. So hopefully you guys, you guys should be able to see this so I can see it too. It's kind of important that I see. Okay, we're good here. It should be good. Actually, this is what I wanted. I'm dumb. So basically what I'm doing right here, so these are ceramic capacitors. Um, you don't want to, if there's a short, so if you can read continuity across them, that is not good. That means they're bad. So we should have some, um, uh, some um, unidirectional um, resistance across it, like we're getting like that. So these are good. No issues here. But if we have a short, if we can read directly across it, that would not be good. So same with diodes. We should be able to read one direction and not the other. So that's what we want. If we were reading both directions, that would be the diode is bad. Let's see, this is just an inductor, so we should get nothing. Yeah. Good to go. We'll come back and check these resistors more in depth later. So I may have to take this little board off to check on the other side. Um, it is soldered right here, um, but let's continue on. So this first element Okay, now this, let's see, is this one the same? It is. Okay, so, never mind, I see the circuit. Okay, so that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that right there. So let's move on to this one. You move the meter right here. Okay, so same element, same exact type thing. So I'm just going to quickly check stuff. Diode is good. Caps are good. That diode is good. That inductor is good. That inductor is good. Resistor will come back and check. But yeah, this cap was the same on this one, so it's not blown or shorted. Sometimes you can get thrown off by that, but it's just honestly the traces that connect both sides of it so you will get continuity across it. That diode is good. These caps are good. All good here. Move on to the next one. I want to make sure this meter remains in frame. 
should be good there. Right here. A lot of this stuff is just quick checking. I mean... Diode is good. Coil is good. Okay, now this diode may be bad. In fact, nope, that diode is good. All looks good here. So this next element board is actually down in here. I would let me readjust the camera so that can be seen. So each of these are the exact same antenna element. They're all the same. They're just in different spots. Most commonly in stuff like this, we're going to get blown diodes. But all these are good. Though actually, there is not a known problem with this coil. This is just a diagnostic to see if anything's wrong with it. And so far, I think this one's perfectly fine. Okay, now if you remember, this is a co an inductor, and let's see. Let's go resistance mode. Let's compare resistance across this one. This one was acting a little bit funny. Eleven ohms, nine ohms. Let's see what this one's measuring. No, that's, yeah, that's fine. Just had to double check there, but that one is fine. These caps are good on this element. Also good here, this diode down in here. It's good. Cap is good. This resistor should be good. So the thing about resistors, like these are all measuring continuity across them. A resistor is almost never going to fail in the manner that it has a lower resistance than higher. So whenever a resistor blows, it's typically going to be an open circuit or some really, really high um, um, resistance. So one way we could check this, we put our meter into resistance mode. So Wait, looking up the value of this is kind of going to waste time. So what I can do is just measure one. So let it stabilize. So let's see what we're getting. Okay. Roughly around 26 milliohms. Come on. Wait. So if you're, especially an auto-ranging meter, if your leads um, aren't touching. Okay, so 11.5 ohms. See how my lead was not on there too good. So right around, yeah. Okay, let's try a different one. You have to make sure your leads have a good contact, because th this is why sometimes I don't like auto-ranging meters. So we just want to see what roughly they're measuring. And that's all over the place for some reason. This is why I don't like auto-ranging meters. Okay, let's set it manual.
I just want to see if they're roughly measuring the same, and so far they're not. Okay, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to look up this um, color code. On. Okay, so these are 82.4 um, kilo ohm resistors, but the thing about these is that it's in circuit. We cannot actually measure this. So in order to measure each and every one of these, we'd have to take them off and doing so is not going to be practical. So what I'm going to do is just make sure that they are roughly reading the same amount in continuity mode um, because if the resistor is blown in the circuit there's likely going to be is likely going to read higher than a normal one. So you can see roughly these are okay so this one's a little bit nope that one's good. So we're just going to go through and check these all in circuit in continuity mode. It is, it's just not practical to remove them all to test them unless we get one that is substantially higher reading. So we can see these are all like 1 ohm, 1.8 ohms, so these are, should all be good. If we got one that's like 4 ohms or something, okay, here we go. 3 ohms, okay, so this, let's wait a sec. Nope. I reversed my leads and that was the problem. These are all the same value wise, so that is not of concern. Um, let's go ahead and check these caps right here. Let's go back to diode mode here. No short across it, which is good. Whenever these crack or anything like that, you'll get a short. So as long as we're getting OL on the meter, these are most likely good. A ceramic capacitor typically is not going to fail in a way that the value is going to be off. Um, they just don't fail like that. Electrolytic caps do and can, but ceramic caps like these aren't going to fail. So if you have a I forget what these are, but if you have a, a let's say a hundred microfarad ceramic capacitor, it's not going to become like twenty microfarad over time. It's typically going to stay at the same value, and if they fail, they just short. At least that's my experience with ceramic capacitors, and all of these seem fine. So let's move down into here in this area. So this area we have a flex cable. We have to check around here for any breaks in the solder joints and that looks good that's stuck on by adhesive let's check these caps in here good it's hard to see because the meter is at an angle that's good also good Now this one right here is indeed broken. I could see it. It's hard to see. Um, let me actually, I'm going to have to look at this under the microscope. But one of these caps, the end is all messed up from physical damage. Most likely someone was working on this before and chipped an end off of it. That would definitely cause an issue. So anytime you take a chunk out of the capacitors like that, please don't reuse them. I've seen on boards that people have taken a chunk off of them and kept them on the board. Don't do that. They're not going to work right. So that could be our issue with this coil right here. So one last element. It's in diode mode. Yes. Okay. Someone's replaced this diode before. That's good. Good inductor. It's good. Okay, that's about it. Um, let's just inspect these coax connectors. Make sure there's none that are broken off the board, and all seem fine. 
Okay, so this cap down here, it's going to be hard for me to show you guys, um, but what I'm going to go do is grab one of my microscopes, like the SC400, and I'm going to inspect this under the microscope to see if I could see, I can't really see it well, and I can't see without uh, magnification, so I'm going to do that now, and I'm going to have a look. Okay, so what I initially thought was an abnormality is actually not. This is why it's important to have a microscope or something that you can look at this stuff. So upon inspection with the just the naked eye, it looks like one of the caps was actually chipped. But under the microscope, you can see it's actually a little clip that is uh, soldered onto the flux cable and then onto the capacitor. So that's actually fine. And if you look at the other side of it, if I can look at the other side here. So... I know there's probably going to be people commenting that you broke it and this and that. No, nothing's going to get hurt from a two and a half inch fall. Okay, so where is my field of view here? Hard to find sometimes. But if you look at this side, so I'm trying to find it. Let me put my hand on it though. So okay, right here. If you look at this side, it's actually the same. So one way to tell is looking at both sides, the, it, it looks exactly the same. So it's not actually chipped. It's just um, how that's attached to the coil. Most likely for drop resistance and stuff like that, they'll put a little uh, spring on the cap so it does not break in the connection, especially in like a flex cable like this that's designed to flex. So that's perfectly normal. No issues there. Okay, and this little thing right here, a little screw. Um, when I was moving this here, I noticed something was rattling, and sure enough, this was loose down in here. So I wonder where this one can't find it, but it's the same type of screw that goes on um, these little boards, and none are missing. So most likely, what happened is somebody replaced. W they most likely lost one of the screws. Um, it was probably sitting down in here, so they just put another one in and left this one in there. So there's that. So the last thing we have to inspect here is going to be the plug. So the plugs are. You can get failures in the plugs too. It's not just a normal plug. So let's have a look here. So let's see how this one opens. Now this one is going to be a real pain to open. Actually, this one, the end of this one, is does not look like you can open it actually. So this is actually a whole plug assembly that is melted together so there's no looking at the plug in this so it's e at least right here it's easily replaceable so if you see right here if there's an issue in the plug there's just a few coax connections here two screws in the plug and then the whole plug and everything comes out but yeah I don't see any uh, way of opening this because it is there's no way you're gonna open this cleanly without it breaking apart so I'm gonna skip that but otherwise this looks perfectly fine like I said there wasn't a known issue with this um, this was just to check this out to see if there was an issue, and so far everything seems fine. I couldn't find any um, issues with it. Um, look, the last thing we could check is these little connections to these antenna element boards to see if there's any breaks in the solder connections, and I don't see any. Both are connected, all of them are connected both to the antenna element and to the little circuit board. There's no breaks down in here. Kind of have to feel a little bit because you'll tell if there's a break. So yeah, otherwise this one looks perfectly fine. I don't see any issues with it. These coax connections are fine. Yeah, that's about it. This one's good to go. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something from this.